guys, it's Emma with another true crime video. And today it's going to be a little bit different. Today we're going to be talking about why people kill. Why do people commit murder? What is it that turns that switch that makes people suddenly become a murderer? Have they always been this way? Or is it something that just occurred in their mind? Did they have a mental illness? What is it? And the reason why there's so many crime videos and documentaries out there is because the normal person like you and me just cannot get our heads around why somebody would do that, which makes it so interesting. Because not only are we listening to it or watching a documentary because we want to know the story behind what actually happened with the crime, but we are actually interested in why somebody could do this. In the back of our minds, we're constantly asking ourselves, why would you even want to do that? What's made you even become that person? And then the whole fact that a lot of these people don't feel any remorse afterwards or have even any sort of conscience beforehand or even afterwards. So there are a couple of types of serial killers and there's the visionary killers. Now these people will look, will kill others because you know, they believe that they've got visions from God or angels, Satan, demons, or that they're victims themselves. Now we have missionary killers, and these tend to murder a particular class race or a type of a group of some, a group of person to eliminate them. And I mean, you could consider Hitler as a missionary killer, really, because he was killing the Jews or the gypsies other groups you know in world war Two, and then there's the hedonistic killers and they're thought to gain intense um gratification sexual gratification from their acts of violence and then there's control there's the power killers and i think these are one of the most popular most common ones and these are the ones that just want control over their victim in every way they want to decide who the person is, where the person is, when they die, how they die. And they just want that control and that complete power over that person. And they get some sort of gratification, whether it be um, mental or physical gratification, just from having that control. A lot of narcissistic people can fall into this category. And so they did a study where they interviewed six serial killers to try and understand why their motivation and what psychology was behind it. And they, were, they seemed to put these uh, power control killers into three groups. And they said there was the organized killers. And these were the ones that planned the attack. They planned the timing. They chose their victim they possibly stalked them and carried weapons. Now, they very rarely did anything at the place where they actually got their victim, where they encountered the victim, and usually took the victim to another place, whether it be to their house or another location, and it was usually pre-planned. And this made it harder for the police to really like collect the evidence and to work out exactly who the killer was, because it was so thoroughly thought out. To begin with. Now Ted Bundy, he is a perfect example of an organised killer. Now he must have murdered up to like 100 women. Um, I think he's confessed to like 30 at his trial. But the true number of victims really is unknown. And you know, Ted Bundy really, he was a good looking man. You know, he could have made something of himself, but he chose to go down this path. And he would approach the women in a public place and he would ask them for help, you know, saying he was like injured or disabled. And he'd wear like a sling on his arm or, you know, try and get some sort of sympathy from his victims. Or he'd even pretend to be like an authority figure. And it was all to gain this power over them, to assault them. And it was usually in a secluded place. And it was all so very planned. And he would even break into the houses. He would know who he was looking for, stalk them, 
you know, and he would uh, break into the houses and bludgeon them to death. And he committed so many assaults and so many murders and he received all these death sentences and died in the electric chair in Florida in 1989. And then there's disorganized killers and these just don't plan anything. They don't plan their attacks. And, you know, they just, the, the victim just happens to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And, you know, the killer might not even bring a weapon. So they may find that these people have been strangled because they've not got any weapons on them. They weren't planning. They, they were going to the, you know, they were going to fuel the car. And they just happened to see someone walking out. They think, wow, she's attractive or whatever it is. And they, you know, they go for this person or they hit somebody over the back of the head in an argument at home, a domestic argument. They get fed up, they get the iron and hit them over the back of the head. This is a disorganized killer, somebody that has not planned this attack and they don't know how to dispose of the body and they don't know how to cover up their crime. And these are usually the ones that are easier to solve because this person has not planned this. And so they may panic or they may leave evidence behind. And then there's the mixed killers. And, you know, they may kill occasionally, you know, like when they're drinking or say they've taken some drugs or they may be involved in other crimes. And, you know, they don't really fit into the organised or disorganised um, sort of criteria. And organised killers may be psychopaths who plan their crimes and often kill in cold blood, but disorganised killers um, could be psychopaths, but may be psychotic. Psychotic means that they've lost touch with reality and they may have hallucinations or delusions. So let's talk about psychopaths. So psychopaths. It's... <laughs> is a guide for mental... It describes a condition called antisocial personality disorder. And this describes many people we would consider serial killers. And with this disorder, um, there's just no regard for the law or social norms at all. And they've probably got maybe a long history already of arrests and fights, um, but maybe not. You know, this could be the first time. And they, but they act very impulsively and they don't care about people's safety or their own safety. And this condition is common in men and women, both. Um, I wouldn't say it's more common in men or women. Um, I haven't done a study on that, so I wouldn't be able to say. And we see a lot of psychopaths on the TV. We read about them in books and we see films and we see the severe forms of this psychopathy, this personality disorder. Chris Watts was considered a psychopath, but I haven't studied Chris Watts. So as I was reading about a psychopathy, and, you know, it was saying that it's a very difficult um, thing to diagnose. And these people can possibly like we said before, already have some sort of um, crime in the background. They can lack inhibition and do not learn from experience like we do. We do something wrong and we learn from it. These people don't. And they can seem charming, almost like Chris Watts, but their ability to feel guilt or empathy or love, along with the presence of casual or reckless attachments and behavior, quickly becoming evident. And many traits, especially the ability to make, um, to make clear emotional decisions. Um, and they're just, they're just very unsuccessful at making decisions for their own, for the self or for others, really. And most psychopaths, it said uh, in one book that I read, are men. But I don't know if I believe that. I mean, possibly... And this disorder is unrelated to the society or culture that they come from. It doesn't matter whether they've been brought up in a mansion 
you know, or whether they've come from nothing. It doesn't matter. And people can manipulate, exploit or violate the rights of others. And they don't see others as being vulnerable. And they can intimidate and bully without any remorse. And this, off, this behavior that they have is often criminal. And it leads them to steal and start off with minor crimes usually. But they're just consistently irresponsible, impulsive and just have no concern or consequences for their actions at all. And they tend to blame other people for their problems, the things that they encounter or face. And this disorder becomes evident in their late teens usually, and often can dissipate by middle age if they haven't um, you know, gone through with something uh, really severe. And then I got to attachment disorders and attachment disorders is an attachment that you make with someone when you are born basically within the first couple of years of you being alive whether it be your mother your father the caregiver whoever it is that is looking after you that's changing your nappy that's feeding you you develop a bond with that person now when a bond is not made as a child that child becomes very controlling they have to become controlling because they don't feel that anyone else has control over them that's looking after them. So they create this own control of theirs. And because of this uh, disattachment disorder, as they get older, they can start committing crimes. And if you look at any case that you're interested in, and you look back at the person that's committed it, you listen to how they were brought up and how the parents were with them. And just talk about Chris Watts for just a second. Now, the way his mum acts towards him is very strange. She makes out that he is the perfect, most wonderful person ever in the world. And whatever he does, whether he murders his whole family or what, he is brilliant. And she's constantly telling him that on these phone calls that we listen to on the internet. He's grown up thinking he is amazing and anything he does is right. He can never make a mistake. That cannot have helped the way that he thought, his thought process. So we've looked into killers today and answering the question why do people murder is a very difficult thing to answer because it's not something you can answer in one sentence. We could look at all sorts and we could be here all day looking into cognitive therapy. We could be talking about all the different types of disorder that people can suffer from. Anxiety, depression, agoraphobia, personality disorders, autism, attachment disorders... And we could go into psychopathy and all sorts of other disorders. Everybody's different. Every murderer has a different background. They all have a different upbringing. And they all have something different to bring to the table, which is why we're all so interested in crime, because we cannot get our head around why these people do the things we do. Okay, guys, well, that's just a little bit of psychology behind murderers for you today. Um, my next video is going to be about gun crime, knife crime, what types of um, instruments people use in order to murder and why they murder people with that item. Um, there's also a difference between women and men as to knives, how they hold the knives when they murder somebody. It's all very interesting stuff, so check in for that one. Um, so if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, that'd be great. All you have to do is press the button and if you could like, subscribe and just leave a comment below. That'd be great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Stay safe. Bye.